Let us look at another example of sequencing n jobs on one machine. Six jobs P, Q, R, S, T and U have been received by a manufacturing facility to be processed on a single machine. Their processing times have been given to us as follows. So P takes 7 minutes to be processed, Q takes 6 minutes to be processed, R takes 8 minutes to be processed, S takes 4 minutes to be processed, T takes 3 minutes to be processed and U takes 5 minutes to be processed. Now we have to determine the optimal sequence as per the SPT rule. Now this SPT rule is nothing but the shortest processing time method. Second, determine the flow time or the completion time of the jobs. Third, determine the mean flow time. And fourth, determine the average in process inventory. So basically there is one machine and we have six jobs to be processed on that machine. Now we have been given the processing time for each of the jobs and we need to determine based on the shortest processing time method which job should be processed first, which next and so on. Now what is the shortest processing time method? So in this method, the priority rule of sequencing is based on the processing time of the jobs. The job with the shortest processing time is scheduled first. The remaining jobs are sequenced according to their processing time lengths. So basically the job with the maximum processing time length is scheduled at the end of the sequence. So let us determine these four questions that we have at our hands. So let us put the jobs first. So jobs P, Q, R, S, T and U. Then let's put down the processing times. So P is 7 and again this is in minutes. Q is 6, R is 8, S is 4, T is 3, and U is 5. Now, based on this jobs and processing time, first we will process the job with the lowest processing time as per the SPT rule. So, T is the one with the lowest processing time then S is the next, then U is the next, then Q is the next, then P and in the end R. So let us note this down in the sequence that we have arrived. jobs first will be P then second will be S third will be U fourth will be Q fifth will be P and in the end R and the processing times
So for T, it is 3. For S, it is 4. U, it is 5. Q, it is 6. T is 7. And R is 8. So this is the sequence for processing these jobs as per SPT rule. So we have completed part 1. Now part 2 says determine the completion time or the flow time. So let us find that out. So T will be processed first and it will take 3 minutes to be processed. S will be processed after T has been completed. So it will be 3 plus the processing time of S which is 4. So this becomes 7. U will be processed after S is completed. So 7 plus 5 which is 12. Q will be processed after U is completed. So 12 plus 6 which is 18. P will be processed after Q is processed. So 18 plus 7 which is 25. And R will be processed after P is processed. So 25 plus 8 which is 33. So basically what this flow time indicates is that at the 12th minute we will complete processing U. At the 18th minute we will complete processing Q and so on. So we have completed part 2. Now part 3 says find out the mean flow time. So basically the average of all these so the average is 3 plus 7 plus 12 plus 18 plus 25 plus 33 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 divided by 6. So this is equal to 16 point three three minutes so this is the mean flow time now fourth is to find out the average in process inventory so what this means is that per minute of the time while these six jobs are being processed how much inventory is either not processed or in process and not completed. So let's first find out how many jobs are either in process or not completed during these processing times. So while T is being processed for the first three minutes, nothing has been completed. So all the six jobs are in process or not yet even started while s is being processed for four minutes one job is already complete which is t so now the the number of jobs remaining is five for this five minutes number of jobs remaining is four for this six minutes number of jobs remaining is three for this seven minutes number of jobs remaining is 2 and for this 8 minutes number of jobs remaining is 1. So now for these 3 minutes 6 jobs are in process for 4 minutes 5 jobs are in process 5 minutes 4 jobs are in process 6 minutes 3 jobs are in process 7 minutes 2 jobs are in process and for 8 minutes 1 job is in process. So now let's find out the average in process inventory. So the average in process inventory will be equal to so 3 multiplied by 6 plus 4 multiplied by 5 
plus 5 multiplied by 4 plus 6 multiplied by 3 plus 7 multiplied by 2 plus 8 multiplied by 1 divided by the total time for processing which is 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. So this becomes 18 plus 20 plus 20 plus 18 plus 14 plus 8 divided by 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 5 is 12, 12 plus 6 is 18, 18 plus 7 is 25 and 25 plus 8 is 33. So this becomes now 8 plus 8 is 16 plus 4 is 20 plus 8 is 28. So 8 in the units place and 2 carry over. 2 plus 1 3 plus 2 5 plus 2 7 plus 1 8 plus 1 9. So 98 divided by 33 which is equal to approximately 3 joules. So on an average, 3 jobs are in process, which means which are either being processed or yet to be processed. So this way we have completed the fourth also.